So these are the basic tools uh, to pull together a surface level rod. And the top volume you need an M6 nut, a small washer, a big washer, another small washer, and another M6 nut. And then finally you have an M6 connector. To connect them together, you have a one meter and the threaded steel rod that's M6. Attach your first M6 nut. You want to have a depth of about five centimeters or so. And then you add your small washer, your big washer, and your small washer. Top this off with another nut. Line it up nicely in the middle. And then you tighten the two spanners. So that gives you your top. And then to finish it off, you add an M6 connector and you make that flush with the top to protect the threads. So you can do all of this at home in the lab or in your workshop, whatever you've got going on. And then the final stage is to cover it completely in inert blue noxide paint. Uh, so you can do this in the ho at home or in the office and you leave a bit unpainted to allow connectors at a later time. And here is a um, second video on how you can make a rust rod. Um, so it's much easier than surface level marker. Uh, you need an M6 nut, a small washer, a large washer, a small washer, and a final M6 nut. So you start by adding the first M6 nut and you don't go very far down. Add your other washer, your large washer, your small washer and a final nut. And it nice and central have it at the top and finally tighten it up with two spanners. So that gives you your surface, uh, your rust rod um, on a one meter M6 threaded rod tightened at the top. Um, and so the next stage is in the power of Luffy's magic. You cover it in completely in inert noxide blue paint, but you grind with an angle grinder a flat, shiny surface along the whole length of the rod. Um, and it's this bright surface that you'll be using to measure the rust. Right, again, um, and this is how uh, you install a surface level marker on your eyes on the bog site. Um, so I've selected this as my area, um, and the first step is to take a peak depth um, using whatever method you'd normally do. Um, so I felt resistance, so I'm pretty sure that that is the bottom of the peak nail. Um, you know, it's quite a distinct feeling. So the important thing to do here uh, is you always measure the peak depth once you've removed the rods because it's easy to forget the depth you've gone to. So if you take the surface remove the rods 
So I'm using 50 centimeter rods. So I'll measure from my hand. Uh, I can see my peak depth is 68 centimeters. So if you record that. Now I need to cut my surface level marker to size. So measure 68 centimeters. From the top of your marker. Um, so then you cut from the bottom of the marker, uh, which means you don't have to paint anything in the field cut it to length and then you can install it. Right, so I finished cutting my surface level marker uh, and you should have marked the hole where you took your peak depth originally. And now it's just a case of sliding your cut length back into the hole. All the way until you feel that resistance so you know you know that's in the base. So once you're happy it's at the surface, uh, you've now installed your surface level rod. Um, so you should fill out all the additional data uh, required on the item by monitoring. Um, so its location, unique ID, uh, the date of installation, um, and then you're good to go. So once you've set up the site, um, one final thing you can do is use a garden cane topper um, and this just sits on top of your um, connector nut at the top of your surface level marker um, and this just adds a bit of additional protection for the thread um, so you can add extender connectors later um, but also you know, reduces the risk of an animal or a volunteer potentially landing on it and hurting themselves. And so similarly uh, installing the rust rod is uh, equally easy. Usually if you're on a Fold, um, it's probably about a meter feet, so you can just insert the rod without cutting it at all, uh, and that makes your life very easy. Um, the side I'm on at the moment, it's quite shallow feet, it's only about 70 centimeters. Um, so, unfortunately, I have to do a second feet depth, um, which is here, uh, and then I need to cut the rust rod to size. So, I've cut my rust rod with a hacksaw, um, which doesn't take very long. However, a quicker way is also to use uh, a pair of bolt cutters. Uh, they're a bit heavier, but you can snip this in seconds, whereas this took me maybe a minute. Um, so now it's cut to size, and I've noticed the right depth. I've marked my depth, uh, marked my location for my rust rod. And I'll now install my rust rod in the same hole. Um, so you can see I've got my shiny bright face. This is going straight in until you feel that resistance. So I know it's happily in the peak body um, and it's flush with the surface. Uh, and again, um, this is the point to record all the data you need for the peak data hub and your rising board monitoring. Uh, so location, um, date, uh, and then you would do also do a volt post test. Okay, so uh, this is how you can monitor your site. Um, so pretend I'm visiting in a year, um, and so I use the GPS to try and get my approximate location. Uh, if there's been no real change, obviously you'll see the B markers, and that's really helpful. Um, if the vegetation or the peat surface has increased, um, then you might need to use a metal detector or some other method of finding them. But once you've found your surface level marker, uh, if it's still at the surface and there's no real change, obviously that's you know, it's a stable system, so you'd record that as zero centimetres change. Um, if the washer was now buried by sort of peat, um, you'd record that depth as a positive change, so it's, it's gained peat. Uh, but if the washer was standing proud of the surface, you'd have to record that 
is a negative change, so if a loss of peat, then you'd record that as a negative number. Um, and there'll be more information on this on the peat data. Right, so we're here to uh, monitor our rust rods, and we'll pretend this is in the future. Um, once you've located it, uh, you need to record all the information you're going to use, uh, so the date of the survey, unique rust rod ID, um, and then of course you want to record the depth from the washer at the surface to a line of rust on the mild steel rod beneath. So to do this you have to remove your rust rod from the ground. A useful feature is to mark where it is with an object or a tip rod so you can find the original hole. And then to reveal the rust essentially with some water and the paintbrush. And you're looking to reveal the bright, shiny face again. But somewhere in the intervening time, um, there will be a rust line where the average water table sits. Um, so say it's over here, you then measure the distance from the surface for the start of the rust line and then you record that down as your depth, your rust line depth. Uh, once you've done that you can uh, rub the rust off maybe with some steel wool um, and then reinsert it back into its original location. So one of the very last things you need to do um, is to take a von Post test. Uh, so this gives you a degree an idea of the degree of humification of the peat on your site um, and it basically tells you how decomposed it is and gives you an idea of site condition. Um, so yeah unfortunately it's a very messy one, um, we'll give some instructions on eyes on the bog uh, but you have to really get in there <laughs> to grab, grab some peat material, um, ideally at risk depth. some judgments about what's left so I would say I'm extruded by my hand probably about a third um, you know it's brown in color uh, it's moderately decomposed I mean I can still see some vegetation um, it's not much water coming out uh, but it's also it's quite greasy quite pasty um, the residue that's left in my hand so I would put that somewhere between H6 uh, and H7 on the Von Post scale. Um, it can be a little bit subjective, it's probably H6. Um, and we may give the opportunity to add one or two recordings for the uh, same point if you can't quite decide. Um, but generally, uh, it's quite straightforward. Uh, and after, after a bit of practice, it's quite good fun.